All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Dr. Dr. Stone, Stone, Season 1, Episode 24. The finale. The last episode of the season. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. And Season 2 is on its way, but you right. know, things are the way they are, so it's going to be probably a while before that comes. So, uh, yeah, that means we're starting a new show next week, so That's stick around right. to the end of the discussion to find out what it is. Mm-hmm. Unless you're a patron already and you already voted for whichever one. One. You know, one and stuff, yeah. so you already mm-hmm. know. But uh, that being said, uh, we've got uh, uh, a fight on our hands, or maybe, maybe not a even. Should be on our because hands. Because we have unlocked cell phone technology. Yes, and we still don't know exactly what the ramifications are of that as far as, like, say, how details. many units they can communicate with and things like that. Right, yeah. details. But so we have communication on the lines of mm-hmm. modern, I would say, technology for the most part. Sukasa, however, will be a problem still. The mm-hmm. question is, are we going all the way into spring and just skipping a lot of the prep that they'll show in addition to just getting cell phone I technology? Know. I don't you know. know. Cell phone technology? Right. So, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. But it is the last episode of the season. Right. So, uh, expectations are high with regards mm-hmm. to how you leave off things before the bridge into season two. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, and then come back here for the discussion. Wow. Oh, that was just so precious. I can't believe I didn't clue in. Like, the OP was literally telling us the things yeah, that weren't, yeah, uh-huh. weren't in right. like, the, I was the like, show yet. Like, and I think I mentioned that at some point. I was like, okay, the whole idea of Lillian doing a concert and stuff, that's great. But how does that pertain yeah, to the show? Yeah, and I was thinking more now. like it's the thematic thing. And it was in the right. context of when we mm-hmm. showed it. But the heart of the, the show right. and everything. But the fact and, that it, it precedes Senku having his fist pump, you know, up into the sky. Uh, yeah. It's like this thing of, yes, we'll go into tomorrow, which is literally right. one of the lyrics of the song. Uh, yep, yep. So yep. the song, mm-hmm. we got the song, we got That's, that, the, that, <laughs> that, the, that the team scrounged their resources together and created the capacity to record complicated sound music uh-huh. and put it at a decent enough quality for them to all listen back and, you know, yep. experience it mm-hmm. after, what, 4,700 years, 3,700 3, years? 3,700 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. It's crazy. It's insane. It's absolutely crazy. They've been dead for eons. Uh-huh. And now, oh, that's just, that's like, just so good. <laughs> This one is of, so good. And one of the things that I really love about this uh, is that it's again showcasing that Dr. Stone, as a story, knows how to do the absent father trope. Oh, because, sure. Okay, the whole idea of, like, all right, the war with Tsukasa is on the horizon. Right. We know that's a thing. And, yes, there will need to be multiple cell phones. You can't just have <laughs> the one, right? Those I'm are glad all... they brought that up as a good yeah, joke, though. Because yeah. I was like... Uh, okay. What are they gonna do with that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but the thing is, is that that's not what makes us invested in this story. Right. Like because, you know, in life there might the Sukasas might not look like Sukasa, right? right? You know, it, we might not be in a stone world, right? There's right. always antagonistic forces, if you will, sure. right? And that and the focusing on that is important, but what's most important is remembering the why of what we do, right? Mm-hmm. And and Senku's dad basically saying, hey, I'm going to leave a message so that I can tell you, not what I originally expected of like, okay, here's a bunch of super technical stuff, here's what we've been able to figure out about the petrification and things like that. Nope. Like, nope. It's just saying, hey, remember why you do this. Remember why you do this. I'm not going to get into that sappy, you know, father-son <laughs> stuff, even though, you know, you know what I want to say, you know. But, like, that saved uh, me from bawling with just a little bit of a <sighs> chuckle, because, oh, I was mm-hmm. about to just, uh, yep, 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 lose it there. Like, that that kind of stuff, it's uh, like, oh my god, yes, thank you, because as far as, as far as making characters relatable to us as people, like... It's the connections between the characters that are most important. And while you can develop some great yep. connections within the other characters in the story, and there's reasons why the parents aren't around, so that that way it's the coming of age thing, you have to be on right. your own. Yep. Having that emotional connection to the parents mm-hmm. is, so, is so powerful. 
how can you not have that in there, right? Like, so I, I'm really blown away every time that Dr. Stone brings up Senku's dad because it's not just, yeah. it's not just, hey, dad, you know, there's, there's a reason for it. Yeah. I, I freaking love so. Biak. Yeah, I love everything he represents in the story. I love the way they used the the hope for humanity as a theme mm-hmm. in the in the conflict of overcoming basically the the environment, the scenario yeah. that they're in, and the way that they used Li, uh, Lillian, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lillian. yeah, Li, yeah. The way that they used her character to be basically the um, this whole thing is really beautiful. Like, mm-hmm. like think about think about all the hardship that they've gone through. Like, there's a lot of people that have just died trying to survive this yeah. village. You know, mm-hmm. like it's not been easy. Yep. But, but over the course of that time, there's been lots of little steps and things that have happened, and they've held on to their hundred tails and stuff. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, they've done a good job. They actually kept even apparently the most important. Random story, which also as a storytelling mechanic, a way that they can kind of mm-hmm. constantly bring one up here and there and be like, oh, why are yeah. you remembering this now? I don't know. It just seems kind of relevant now. Uh-huh. Yeah, what you have people that have been revived that mentions, and this is one of the other things that's great. Given the fact that there's two of them, right? There's Senku and uh, Asagiri. Right. They can talk to each other, yes. and then they use terms, and then other people hear those terms, and they're like, oh, like the such and such, right? Because right. otherwise, if it was just Senku... There's not as much reason for it to happen unless yes. he's like sort of mu- thinking out loud, musing to himself, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that's so a that's a that's a really good yeah. That's a writing trick basically mm-hmm. to get there to be a reason for this kind of stuff to be brought yep. up without it feeling forced, right? Even though it was something that it was conveniently brought up because mm-hmm. of the set of circumstances. Right. So, but again, it's something that doesn't solve plot problems, right? right. Which is where usually that uh-huh. gets frustrating, is if it's just like, oh, we randomly have a thing to solve this issue. It's something so it's that introducing communicates... a new thing. Well, well, introducing a new thing, but mm-hmm. also it's communicating the heart and doubling down on the yes. themes of the story, which, yeah, use any excuse you want to oh, bring absolutely. that up again, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So then we get... Like one of the most cathartic moments in the show thus far, which is just getting to hear Byakia speaking to Senku, you know, across time. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know, I just think that that's perfect. I think that there have been a couple moments in the show in the past where it's had like this wholesome, uh, special moment kind Mm -hmm. of to it, and it usually involves Senku or Byakia, usually. Like, it's it's usually that Mm -hmm. kind of dynamic there, or both. Um, but this this was something else. And then the song being mm-hmm. played. Yep. There was something that they did in the previous episode with this as well, which was something you brought up, which was that the science and the joy of discovering this stuff with science elevated the hearts of all the people in the village. And Senku oh, uh-huh. used it like a leader should to yep. properly uh, mm-hmm. motivate and encourage them all in what they were doing. Right. It's good stuff. But this was something that came about independent of that as a collaborative effort from a lot of different peoples who didn't really have, you know, necessarily this kind of thought just kind of sure. constantly pressing uh-huh. in their minds. They were just trying to survive as well. And they're like, yep. hey, let's think beyond ourselves mm-hmm. and let's think about humanity. Uh, like, that's just like, that's just so moving and, to see in an mm-hmm. anime yep. a lot of the conflict and themes of the story uh-huh focus around not me the main character right i'm the main character no Uh it's what about humanity yep what about right all of us what about the power in recognizing that you're one small piece in a much bigger whole like because the whole the the conflict between the village of science right and and sukasa's warriors right Mm -hmm. that's kind of if you go to a meta aspect something that humanity is dealing with constantly do we right. do we transcend or do we descend into barbarism? Right, right? on yeah. whatever level you're talking about, totally. whether you're talking about with actually brutally murdering people or with just little aspects of our everyday life, sure. right? And that is something that you know we're like water; we sink to the lowest point, right? Mm-hmm. But things can happen. There can be reasons and yep. and exceptions to that rule where Absolutely. there's some cause, some 
some external force or internal force or a combination of the two a that vibration, if you will, it sure, the water. yeah, that gives us a chance to rise higher, yeah. right? And that's that's what makes this kind of stuff compelling. Yeah. And within this setting, there is a direct mechanical reason at, mm -hmm. for as 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 to why when they have that sort of like something that in another situation could just be taken as like shallow like yeah power of friendship but how does it actually help it actually has very real consequences oh, very that help real. them do things that they never would have dreamed about otherwise yeah and everyone in the village heard that and exactly. now they're going to be excited yep. about yep. moving forward right because they've seen senku do some things before right and they have their stories and things like that right but that's something more that they know up here rather yeah. than than they know in here for themselves as individuals right. rather than as members of the village yeah and also it's something where they've tapped into some of the present within participating in the construction and building of all these projects. Right. But there's a difference between, also, I would say, to go even beyond knowing it in here, mm -hmm. but in some ways kind of seeing it out here, meaning, like, you imagine it. Because mm. I think that when you get okay. into here, there's this aspect of belief. Sure. And it becomes and something... The heart is a fickle thing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And your beliefs can change on the right. dime. But when you... When you see and imagine mm -hmm. something, you, you dream tangibly it. experience it. Right. It's yeah. It's it's this it's this weird combination of tangibly like mm -hmm. getting the rush of emotions of right seeing yourself experience it in the right. future, mm -hmm. but you know you're, you're this is not just a belief thing. You're like, you're mm -hmm. right. You're experiencing it now, and you know that you will have the more visceral. Mm -hmm. Uh, experience of it in the future right. because something in the present determined the future. Yeah, it's it's right. Up till now, they were doing something where there were external things that that was in parallel with like this belief that Senku sort of you know right. sparked in them that right. maybe there was something more right, and they didn't see contradicting evidence to it. Sure. Right, the evidence seemed to point that he was right. You know, Ishigami mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. But this was like. This was those two things like harmonizing, like like pun very much intended, right? Yeah. And and the fact that it's the fact that it's a song, right? Oh yeah, is is just perfect because it perfect. it's something that like like well, well if, every human yeah. being can be lifted up through song in mm -hmm. some ways, even if you're not able to hear properly. I've had people who have told me that you can actually like touch it, oh, so uh -huh. you feel the vibrations. Right, Yep, even if your ears can't pick it up, it's still a vibration. Yeah, and then it mm -hmm. it rings out in your mind in, sure. a, in, a, in an interesting way, even though it's not actual physical hearing. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something yeah. special, like when, mm -hmm. yeah, I because I don't I don't know much about the science of it, but there are some really cool things that happen when we listen to music, mm -hmm. like on a physical level that happen to our bodies, and it, it is it is really cool to think about what that in and of itself is but then also just the psychological effects of hearing a wonderful voice singing about the hope for the future of humanity yep. uh -huh. and it's from a voice that is you know trained to mm -hmm. perfection there's oh yeah so many yeah. wonderful elements of it and and that was one of the other things that i thought was great is that by having it be in a song it's something where there can still be things that are being communicated into it but because it's not strictly technical mm -hmm. there's it's sort of like by concealing information within it because it's mm. not it's not just one thing. Yeah. Then theoretically, this could become some new aspect, core aspect of their tribe. Even if it definitely say, will even be. if say Senku died, right? Right. Like, like if Sen if Sukasa killed Senku and they yeah. weren't able to scientifically progress and things like that, but Ishigami Village lived on. This song would become something that would absolutely like like it would, would teach their children. They would children, teach their children, children and their children's children and, and like it would it would have all this extra power to it, right? Totally. Because they would be able to keep going back to it. And I right. think that's that yeah. it, it was a great sort of representation also of what anime can be, because it's an oh, artistic sure. form of expression, right? Yep. And even if you might look at, say, the words and you know, and, and I'm sure if Sukasa listened to it, he might be like, hmm, that's a that's a very nice sounding song, but you know, it's just the song kind of right, thing, right? Right. But it can be so much more, mm. right? And they showed how it can be so much more mm -hmm. with Ruri. Yep. Yep. I Absolutely. loved that we got to see her mm -hmm. react in a way because she knew that this was essentially her her ancestor, her yeah. ancestor and her mother at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. Like there's yep. this 
there's this beautiful aspect of where she already knew in some ways because of her lineage and the way she was mm-hmm. raised that her ancestors were all that was important to her. Her whole life was the ancestors and mm-hmm. her stories. Yep. Meaning that in some ways she had to have faith, if you will, or belief in this thing that she was told about, but she had never experienced. Right, and now finally... She has the validation that, mm-hmm. yes, all this purpose that's been put on your life in this specific fashion yep. is mm-hmm. there was monumentally important. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's not just a, well, now you have an extra burden. Mm-hmm. It's this elation of not only that, but I can hear my own voice in her voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean, I'm sure most people watching this just could picture Ruri being like, I'm going to start singing now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to. I'm going to. As a part of the the keeper of the Confirmed. stories, canon. I'm Has also going to learn how to sing that song, so that that way, yep. if the you know, if the little That's the hundred and first story, right, right, exactly. Yeah. Even if the glass you know disc you know thing breaks, they can still yes. keep 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 doing it, passing you know, it on from one generation to the next. You know who I want to become the best singer though in the group though. Suika. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Because yeah, wouldn't it be funny if you had basically stealth Suika? Like in some like high location, and then she's got some kind of like booster like speaker thing doing cultural sneak attacks. Yeah, yeah, the yeah exactly. No, because okay, okay, legit. This is this is a silly thing to say, but and um, and I don't think the show will do this because the moment would be pretty silly. Mm. But in serious talk here, I would not be surprised at all if this happened. Sure. So they so, blow. They. <laughs> I can't speak. You say whatever you're gonna. <laughs> I was gonna say they blast over loudspeakers the music. Yeah. Lillian was the most, you know, influential, right. you know, vocal artist of her time, yeah. right? Everyone of Sukasa's people knows about her. Knows about her. Yep. Yep. And will recognize her mm-hmm. voice if they were to hear it being played. Uh-huh. Now Maybe some of them are burly alpha male people who don't listen to Lady Gaga or whatever, right? But, but, how much you want to bet that quite a few of them really like her music, maybe, you know? Or even if they don't like her music, they'll instantly be thrown back 3,700 years in time to be like, easily, wait a minute. Uh Uh-huh, and I would not be... I actually miss that, like they forgot in some way. Because there is something that art can do that other things can't, right? Cotton candy is powerful, right? (laughs) Yes, it is. But, you know, there are things that go beyond that, and I would not be surprised at all if one or more of Tsukasa's people end up defecting to Senku just because of, of hearing that and being like, yeah, I think that there will be a couple things that could lead to that. The problem is is that they're setting up basically the Sukasa squad. Mm-hmm. I like it because, oh, yeah. one, it's a squad, which means that all those characters have names, mm-hmm. which yep. means that they're all characters. Right, because Sukasa, if you if you look at like the conflict in this story and how much mm-hmm. we care about both sides... Yeah. They've, you know, they've been adding a good amount of extra care to the conflict on yeah. Tsukasa's side, even if you include, right. like, Taiju and Yuzuriha on there, right? Right. But, um, you know, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's even it is not. Obscenely, obscenely <laughs> no way in one direction. And like, given that this show is so much about the power of Nakama and friendship and all of that good stuff, right? Yeah. We need more people on Tsukasa's side that he can interact with, that's, that Senku and everybody else can interact with, yes. and we can see how their hearts are also moved by science, even if they're not swayed entirely. For sure. So, For sure. Yeah, and we'll definitely get that, I'm I'm Mm -hmm. guessing. Um, Getting to see all the characters just together enjoying this was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I really liked that in some ways they kind of just let the recording kind of play itself out and Uh be the majority of the the episode's kind of focus and Mm -hmm. runtime. There was some cool stuff, though, with, uh, with Gen... Asa yes. Mm-hmm. Kind of had some moments where he was kind of making little snide remarks to to, uh, to Senku, Senku uh-huh. just specifically to kind of be yep. like, "Hey, you know what I'm talking about? The ship that you never expected and never knew you needed until it happened." Like, and 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 with and with having Asagiri again, kind of being more in the know with regards mm-hmm. to a lot of these things, leads to some really interesting conversations. Sure, but. There seems to be this aspect because Asagiri's known 
of Senku mm-hmm. since they found his shelter, like way in the beginning of the show, basically. He has these little moments like this where he kind of tests Senku, it seems, and be mm. like, hey, yeah, what are you, what are you about, you know? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, and that's to cover up a lot of the guilt you would have had to, you know, get over from bringing them into this war. And he's like, uh-huh. oh, no, what are you talking about? No, not at all. So I, I get this vibe, mm-hmm. basically, that things are going to go really well. Things are going to go really well. Yeah. And it's that, yeah, yeah, things might be a little bit awkward at points. And yeah, unfortunately, we are going to be in conflict rather soon. And I don't know exactly how to deal with that. But, like, look at what they've done in mm-hmm. such a short amount of time. Yep. Like, that's, that's just uh-huh. unreal. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. so unreal. I... And you gotta <sighs> wonder, like, the villagers have gotta be freaking out, like, oh, internally. Uh-huh. Like, like, can, okay. Like, okay. like, it must take so much effort for them to not just, like, uh-huh. to call Senku a god. Yep. But, but then you have Gen, who has the added perspective of, like, knowing a lot of this stuff, and yet... He knows in some ways even more how incredulous this is mm-hmm. because he understands what would have needed to happen yep. for if a regular like, person was here trying to figure this out. Have you ever had this happen where you listen to a song, right? And even yeah. if you had listened to it before, but uh-huh. for all intensive purposes, this is your first time listening to the song. And right. it's, like, it's like the song is just this, this whole new experience mm-hmm. and it, it really deeply moves you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much more so would that hit you if you had never listened to music before in uh, your life? Take yeah. your absolute favorite song and favorite experience with I can't song, imagine it. And then multiply it by 3,700 years of no music. Like, and I'm sure, I'm sure that they would have, you know, sung on their own maybe or something like that or, you know, done some equivalent, right? But, um, yeah, not really, not really. And this, yeah, not really, and this, no. this whole thing here, they, they are now like so on board with Senku. <laughs> they already were before. Oh, they but, already like, were. They yeah. already were before, totally. But uh, this is uh, this is just the perfect way to end the season. I feel like, and I never yeah. would have expected it to end like this. But there you go. Everything yeah. is perfectly set for season two and, and the battle because we mm-hmm. know they we know and they know what they're fighting for concretely yep. because it's probably going to get tough. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah, for sure. <sighs> oh man. I love this show. Like I'm so glad we decided I, I love to it like put it's, it on the poll and we ended up watching it. It's fantastic. It. Oh my god. <sighs> Good man. stuff. Right. So very good stuff. So uh, we do have a show that's replacing this one. Yes, we do. So should we, yes. uh, should we tell them what it is? Yes. It's Keep Your Hands Off Isokin. Mm-hmm. The yep. uh, recent show about anime, I believe. I think so. Or at kind the very of. least, like... Something like that. Something like that. We've been told that it has a lot of um, like technical terms for like anime production and, and such. So it's probably going to be one of those shows where we'll be learning a lot like mm-hmm. Dr. Stone, if you will. Sure. Like, we'll just be kind of getting a yep. a deep dive into a lot of things and then have to maybe ask some questions and then, mm-hmm. you know, take some good notes. But, like, y'all, I'm All right. really glad we went through Dr. Stone. I'm oh, yeah. really a big fan of the, <laughs> yes, we are definitely a shonen. Yeah. And we are Own definitely going yeah. to go hard on the science angle mm-hmm. of things yep. and make it uh, accessible for, for all us plebs, you know? <sighs> but uh, This is great. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. Season but, 2 cannot come fast yeah, enough. Yeah, season 2 I am very much on board for. I, oh, yeah. I want, I want it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else really to say other than this was a great kind of two cooler start to a yep. story. And yet, I, I gotta say, the thing that surprised me the most about uh-huh. this is I'd say how good it got the longer it went. Yeah. I feel like uh-huh. some of these shows have a premise that peters off a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think this one just yeah. got better the longer it went. Because it's it's not really about the premise. Like, it's mm-hmm. not it's yeah. not about the fact that they're in a stone it's world. It's about 
uncovering and going through and 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 relishing in the wonders of science in our in our world that we live in, right? Yeah. And for that, th- like just with the whole idea of them like bringing back like cultural things from the previous world and adding their own and all of that stuff. I would be happy to see this show go on for I don't even know how long. Like as right. long as it's done with the same quality, which I don't see there being a potential problem with doing because no. it's more about the heart of it than like a concrete thing. Yeah. Yeah, go go for 100 episodes or something. Like it it'll just get gooder and gooder as it goes on. Right. Right. I mean they have 100 stories to go through. That's so, true. You know, I mean, That's true, you know? Yeah. So But y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. <sighs> If you want to see the first episode's reaction to keep your hands off Izokin right now, though, go check out your the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length reactions there. Yep. And there's a Discord somewhere in there. I don't know where it is, but you'll figure it out. Because you're a smart individual That's who right. understands critical thinking and the scientific method now. And so, yeah. And if you want to partake in culture and make sure that it doesn't die out, ah. I wrote a sci-fi novel in case you haven't heard. <gasps> I know, right? It's, like first you time hearing this. Words onto pages. I transcribed words onto pages. That's right. Yes, and it's on Amazon. If you want to check it out, link is in the description. All right. So if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're semblance of sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.